Shavua Tov, everybody. I'm Raleen Marks. This is the Israel Brief, and today it's a brief with a difference. I am on Kibbutz Gavulot, seven kilometers away from the Gaza Strip. Uh, in the background, you will hear cows, you might hear air traffic, and you might hear the occasional artillery shell. I'm actually here today with the Jewish National Fund, USA. They've brought a, a group down to beautify the kibbutz. Slowly but surely, children will start coming back to the kibbutz from next week and the following week to resume school. So let's take a look at some of those headlines from the weekend and we begin with tragic news. The army announced last night that soldier Shai Levinson, who was abducted from Kibbutz Nachal Oz, where he was stationed on the 7th of October, has been murdered in Hamas captivity. His body is held in Gaza. Now, if you listen very carefully, you can hear uh, the planes above me. I'm actually outside uh, what we call a Muguniyot. This is where we go in case of rocket fire. Other top stories, there have been massive protests over the weekend against uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu's handling of the hostage situation. Many of the families of hostages feel that the Prime Minister and his war cabinet are not doing enough to secure the release of hostages. Families of hostages have set up tents outside the Prime Minister's private residence. They say they will stay there until their family members come home. In other news, inside the War Cabinet, there have been disagreements on how best to handle this war. War Cabinet Minister Gadi Eisenkot, he himself, a former IDF chief of staff, has said that he believes that Israel should have a ceasefire for the meantime to secure the release of the hostages. Uh, there is a lot of division building inside the war cabinet on the best way to proceed forward with uh, the release of hostages. But I also want to make something very clear. Even though there might be differing opinions on how best to handle this war, how best to proceed forward, Israelis are very, very much united, everybody here, with a mission how best to serve uh, this country. Everybody, including the many volunteers that are working on this kibbutz behind me, knows exactly what we have to do. Whether it's visiting the sick or cleaning up kibbutzim or packing boxes or speaking in the media, whatever we need to do, Israelis are, are busy doing that. In other news, we now go to Russia, where Russia has drawn a lot of criticism from Israel for comments that they have made with regards to Germany's support for Israel at the International Court of Justice, as well as the Holocaust. I'm going to pause for a second. You can't see them, but you can certainly hear them, Israeli fighter jets in the air above. Russian authorities saying that the uh, Holocaust didn't have that much of an impact on, on Jews. Well, I'm sure we are so relieved, our six uh, million are so relieved that they didn't, that have been murdered during the Holocaust, so relieved that uh, the Holocaust didn't have that much of an impact on us. So, as you can imagine, Israeli officials slamming Russia for these comments. The uh, Russian government has taken an increasingly hostile stance against Israel since the start of this war. Also very controversial are the Russians slamming Germany for Germany's decision to be a third party to intervene on the side of Israel at the International Court of Justice. South Africa famously bringing that case of genocide against the state of Israel. And while we're on the subject of South Africa, uh, what is quite fascinating is that the lawyer who argued that Israeli officials are using genocidal language uh, is, is famous in South Africa for saying that the term kill the boer, kill the farmer is the freedom of speech. To me, that sounds like a call for genocide. 
Police have announced that they have arrested a network of 14 for allegedly selling permits of entry to Palestinians. At the moment, Palestinians aren't allowed to enter Israel to work. As you can imagine, for many Israelis, that trust, that ability to employ Palestinians as workers in, in businesses and in farms has been breached with the events of the 7th of October. Meanwhile, yesterday Israel announced that they will be issuing uh, permits for about 10,000 foreign workers to come into the country to work in the fields. What many people don't realize is that right now a lot of these farms, like the one I'm standing on now, a lot of these kibbutzim, are dependent on volunteers to, to pick fruits and to pick vegetables. And food security is becoming a real issue here in Israel. Many people don't realize that sometimes we go to the supermarket and there are days where our shelves are full and there are days where we don't have as many fruits and vegetables as a result of a lack of labor. A lot of the foreign workers who work the kibbutzim, work the farms, have returned to their countries of, of origin uh, many were killed on the 7th of October, and that's why we face a shortage of labor. So that's it today from the Israel Brief, a very, very different brief from Kibbutz Guvulot, seven kilometers from the border with Gaza. Guys, remember to check out our website at www.layoftheland.online, our Facebook page at Lottel Site our YouTube channel at The Israel Brief. We're on exit lay of the land five from Kibbutz Gvulot with the symphony of war and the sounds of the dairy farm around me. I'm Rolene Marks and I'll check you guys out in studio tomorrow.